Weapons and tools, gadgets and gizmos. Often overlooked in a lot of stories, they are however primary plot points within any comic book or superhero film. In those types of stories, weapons are largely used to either give power to or threaten heroes, cities, or even entire planets. Sometimes they're able to corrupt baddies, and sometimes they're needed to thwart supervillains. Whether a cursed blade or divine hammer, the Marvel Cinematic Universe has introduced us to a plethora of weaponry throughout its first four phases. Obviously, and for the most part, a weapon is only as formidable as the warrior who wields it. I knew it. However, occasionally some weapons are capable of puppeteering their keepers, and some garner so much destructive power that they cannot be controlled by pretty much anyone. With all that being said, let's focus in on the weapons from the MCU and rank from strongest to weakest its top 15 most powerful that we've seen in action so far at least. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into it. The only device capable of harnessing the power of all six Infinity Stones and the centerpiece of the entire first three phases of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the Infinity Gauntlet was used by Thanos to eliminate half of all of existence. Accomplishing massive and destructive feats with as little as a snap of a finger, the Infinity Gauntlet also enhances its wearer with unbridled power. Possessing the space, reality, power, soul, mind, and time stones, which are all uniquely and unfathomably powerful on their own, the Infinity Gauntlet can be used to do whatever his Brandisher wants. Mega punches, energy blasts, time looping, reality warping, if you can name it, the Gauntlet permits it. Provided it's encompassing all six stones, that is. On top of garnering what is effectively the greatest weapon in the entire universe, the Mad Titan Thanos is formidable in his own right, with or without any weapons at his behest. Combining Thanos' genocidal mindset and natural godlike strength with the Infinity Gauntlet's nearly unlimited capabilities, the history of Earth-199999, or 616 if you're Kevin Feige, will forever be changed due to the consequences of the forever infamous snap, resulting in the five-year-long blip. Because of these feats and the level of importance of the Infinity Gauntlet inside the MCU, it ranks in our number one spot as the most powerful weapon so far. An enchanted battle axe with the ability to summon the Bifrost, Thor and company forged Stormbreaker after Mjolnir was destroyed in order to defeat the Mad Titan himself. Capable of thwarting battlefields full of foes with ease, Stormbreaker was able to greatly damage and even decapitate Thanos. Subsequently, Stormbreaker would become Thor's primary weapon of choice, especially since his daughter Love is worthy of wielding Mjolnir herself. The greatest weapon in Asgard's history, the power of Stormbreaker is thought to have also been mystically increased when Groot sacrificed an arm in order to create the handle for the divine weapon. Focusing and even enhancing Thor's natural powers, Stormbreaker is nigh indestructible and can withstand energy blasts created by the Infinity Stones. Including a hammerhead on its alternate side, Stormbreaker is essentially Mjolnir times 10. And although it may lack a worthiness enchantment, <laughs> Still don't know how you do it. it can only be used by someone powerful enough to handle its might, or you know, lift its weight. You're all not worthy. The Chitari Scepter, sometimes referred to as Loki's Scepter, was an alien and magical artifact containing and manipulating the power of the Mind Stone. Used by Loki to infiltrate people's minds and responsible for giving sentience to both Ultron and Vision, the Scepter was also used by Hydra to unlock the powers of Wanda and Pietro Maximoff. Additionally, the Scepter is capable of projecting energy blasts and emitting gamma radiation. Using the Scepter to fight the Avengers head-on as it's proficient when used in hand-to-hand -hand combat, Loki also impaled S.H.I.E.L.D. agent Phil Coulson with its sharp head, actually killing him until, you know, a show may or may not have brought him back into canon. It's all questionable. It was so powerful that it was able to close the portal created by the Tesseract but the scepter itself would become obsolete once the Mind Stone was removed from its core. After the Battle of Earth, Steve Rogers would travel back in time to an alternate 2012, restoring the timeline by returning the Mind Stone, albeit without the scepter. Although a throwback, to say the least, the Jatari scepter was used to almost destroy the world, and then helped create Ultron, who also almost destroyed the world. And then the Mind Stone itself would help in destroying half of the universe. But for these reasons, the Jatari scepter gets proper shine on our list. Used by the Fire Demon Surter to destroy Asgard during the events of Ragnarok, the Twilight Sword is capable of setting the entirety of Asgard ablaze with one plunge into its land. Although Surter himself had been defeated by Odin thousands of years ago, and also more recently by Thor, fellow relative Loki would see to it that the prophecy known as Ragnarok came true. Hela attempted to stop Surter and his fiery blade using her corrupted necro swords, 
and failed miserably. Surtur went on to not only destroy Asgard, but he would also destroy Hela, himself, and the Twilight Sword along with it. Though we may never see a version of the Twilight Sword again, for new Asgard's sake, that's probably for the better. Whosoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, he shall possess the power of Thor. More infamous words have never been spoken in all of comics. This enchanted hammer, Mjolnir, wielded by the God of Thunder himself, is unquestionably the most battle-tested and consistent weapon in Marvel history. Used as a tool in defending Asgard and conquering armies for thousands of years, Mjolnir has been steady in Thor's hand as he's defended Earth and many other planets alongside the Avengers and the Guardians of the Galaxy, aiding its user in flight, weather manipulation, energy projection, and much more. Mjolnir is only able to be lifted by those deemed worthy. As we saw in Avengers Endgame, Steve Rogers was able to lift the Divine Mallet while battling Thanos. More recently in Thor Love and Thunder, the mighty Jane Foster was able to repair and then use Mjolnir, which was also keeping her alive using her remaining life force. After that, Thor's adopted daughter Love was last seen wielding Mjolnir inside of the MCU, and it's implied that she will continue the Hammer's tradition of dispatching foes across the cosmos. Anyone else? Obsidian swords generated by the Asgardian goddess of death, Hela, necro swords are powerful enough to vanquish most beings without any issue. Corrupted and capable of slaying gods, Hela used necro swords to slice through Asgardians with ease. Furthermore, Gore the God Butcher discovered the necro sword, which he used to destroy a number of gods, earning his name in the process. We actually aren't sure if the necro sword and Hela's necro swords are one and the same, but we're gonna group them together here just in case. Although in the comics, Hela used the cursed Night Swords and Gore's Blade All Black was manifested by the god of symbiotes Null, the core abilities of the Necro Swords remain roughly the same within the MCU. Effective in conquering deities, All Black specifically is capable of creating symbiote-like shadow creatures, which enables its owner to teleport and recognize enhanced power. With that being said, once All Black was destroyed, Gore would pass alongside it, as the darkness of the blade was feeding off of his life force. It's questionable if such dark enchantment was also cast on Hela with her necro swords, because, you know, she kind of got got by Surtur before we could figure that out. Discovered by Wen Wu during the Middle Ages, which granted him near immortality and absolute power, the Ten Rings also provided the name and symbol for his army. After a thousand years of wielding the rings, Wen Wu would pass them on to his son Shang-Chi, ensuring his survival and the defeat of the Dweller in Darkness. This set of Hungar Iron Rings are worn around the wrists like bracelets. However, in the comics, these were rings that the Mandarin would wear on his fingers. Granting their users enhanced strength and longevity, the Ten Rings can be fired as projectiles and emit concussive energy blasts. Telepathically controlled, the enhanced strength provided by these rings are proportionate to how many rings are being used and to what degree. For instance, by wearing five rings on each wrist, the power would be distributed evenly through both arms. Alternatively, if all ten rings were to be worn on the same wrist, that arm becomes infinitely more powerful than the other. I am Iron Man. Design cultivated and mastered by brilliant scientist, inventor, and billionaire philanthropist Tony Stark, Iron Man and his vast armoire of iconic iron suits are the catalyst to the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm the best. From a thrown together spare parts version to multiple numbered mark upgraded suits, to a giant sized alternate capable of stifling the Hulk, Iron Man's armor has protected and led the Avengers to countless victories, defending not only Earth but time and space as well. Different versions of the armor possess different strengths, weaknesses, purposes, and capabilities, although most consist of the same core group of weapons and functionalities. Flight on Earth or in space, underwater navigation, repulsors, blasters, protons, and EMPs. Iron Man's suit is the Swiss Army knife of superhero garments. Now, not only have we seen Tony Stark's weapons and technology stolen and replicated in abundance of times, often in an effort to thwart Stark and the Avengers themselves, we have also seen other characters don iron suits and garner mantles of their own. Colonel James Rhodes had gone on to become War Machine and Iron Patriot, whose armors are very heavily artillery-based, overloaded with explosives and lead. 
During Avengers Endgame, Pepper Potts donned the rescue armor and aided in the fight against Thanos, with Obadiah Stane and Justin Hammer using Stark's technology and the Iron Legion against him. The world was also under duress at the hands of Ultron, who is essentially evil, sentient Stark tech, hell-bent on destruction. And the Iron Armored suits will live on. As seen in the trailer for Black Panther Wakanda Forever, we will meet Riri Williams for the first time, who will also have her own series Ironheart during Phase 5 of the MCU. One of the most recent pieces of weaponry introduced inside of the MCU, we got to see Thunderbolt in action quite a bit during Thor Love and Thunder. Originally wielded by Zeus, upon visiting and doing battle with him in Omnipotent City, Valkyrie would basically steal Thunderbolt after it was deflected through Zeus's chest. Nearly perishing and factoring in his prior resentment towards superheroes, it seems as though Zeus has tasked his son Hercules with waging war against supers and retrieving his celebrated Thunderbolt. Used as a double-ended blade or as a projectile, striking foes down with laser-like lightning strikes, Thunderbolt seems most powerful when used by its original keeper, Zeus. With that being said, there is no doubt in my mind that Valkyrie will hone the true potential of the blade while sitting as King of New Asgard. But we all know that everybody is just waiting and salivating at the thought of a Thor vs. Hercules movie. I know I am. Hofund, aka the Bifrost Sword, is the giant divine blade wielded by Heimdall, the gatekeeper of Asgard. Used primarily as a key to open the Bifrost, we have also seen the Bifrost Sword used in battle throughout the first few phases of the MCU. Unfortunately, after the destruction of Asgard, Hofund essentially lost its main purpose. However, that had not prevented Heimdall from retrieving the sword and using it for regular combat. Furthermore, it is believed that Hofund was imploded by the Power Stone upon the Statesman, after Hulk and Heimdall's battle with Thanos on the aforementioned spaceship. Having last seen Heimdall in the afterlife realm Valhalla during Thor Love and Thunder's post credit scene, where, you know, he didn't have it. We've also been introduced to his son Axel, and with Axel training his sword skills under Valkyrie and New Asgard, don't be surprised if we see him wield some sort of Hofun successor, or a variant of it, in the near future. An ancient sword connected to the family history of Dane Whitman, aka Black Knight, the Ebony Blade will turn whoever wields it matter and matter upon every drop of blood it spills. Enchanted and able to cut through any object, deflect magic, and even prevent the death of its wielder, unfortunately the Ebony Blade is also corrupted with a curse, drawing out the negative emotions of anyone who uses it. Although we've only seen the Ebony Blade inside of a box during the post credit scene of The Eternals, the consequences of Dane Whitman touching the blade and becoming Black Knight are sure to be dire. Being warned by the human-vampire hybrid Blade, who subtly asked him, Sure, sure you're ready for, for that, that Mr. Mr. Whitman? Whitman? My prediction is we will get a movie of Black Knight slaying vampires with his newfound sword and best friend. This way, he'll not go mad by not spilling any actual blood, and he'll be able to hone his skills and make us fall even further in love with his character before his inevitable bloodthirsty turn. Built by the same young man who has also mastered their functionality, Peter Parker, best known as Spider-Man, created and cultivated his iconic web shooters himself. With minimal resources, aside from the occasional aid by his mentor Tony Stark, Spider-Man designed his own very durable and flexible web fluid to accompany his other radioactive spider-like abilities. Used to swing around town, trap thieves like flies, or bludgeon bad guys with a ball blast, Spider-Man's webbing is without a doubt the most essential tool in his arsenal. Originally crafted by Howard Stark, Captain America's shield is as trusty as a pet dog. Taking on a variety of shapes and designs over the years in the comics, a few characters have used variants of the shield within the MCU. With Captain Carter appearing in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness and the animated series What If, using a Union Jack decorated shield. Sam Wilson, formerly the Falcon and current Captain America, is now the proprietor of patriotic punishment as he donned the stars, stripes, and Wakanda tech officially for the first time during the Falcon and the Winter Soldier and he will presumably do so again in the Phase 5 film, Captain America New World Order. Most likely Moon Knight's favorite of his myriad of weaponry, these interchangeable blades can be used as daggers for close hand-to-hand -hand combat or can even be thrown from a distance as piercing projectiles. Referred to as his toys in the comics, these calling cards are kept by the dozens in his holster. In the MCU, however, it seems as though Moon Knight is able to manifest his crescent darts supernaturally. Inspired by the Egyptian god of the moon, Khonshu, these lunar-styled shuriken reflect the shape of a crescent moon, hence the name. Stephen Grant, Mark Spector, Jake Lockley, these are a few of Moon Knight's personalities. 
and all of them are proficient with a variety of weaponry. Some of the people inside Moon Knight's head, however, prefer using guns as their primary weapons, and are often gruesome and ruthless in their attacks. Talk about shooting for the moon. More than just a regular blade, God Slayer is a collapsible sword wielded by the Guardians of the Galaxy member Gamora. Including a detachable dagger and feeling nearly weightless to its holder, God Slayer is also capable of splitting into two separate blades entirely. Although we haven't really seen this happen on screen as of yet. Able to cut through most metals, God Slayer earned its name for its ability to slay as guardians. Once again, we have not yet seen this feat accomplished visually within the MCU, but in the comics, the blade is said to have slain immortals. Furthermore, we are introduced to an alternate version of God Slayer, along with a variant Gamora during Avengers Endgame. The possibility exists that the version of God Slayer from the past is slightly different from the one we've seen OG Gamora use. Perhaps we're in store for more surprise capabilities displayed by Gamora using God Slayer in the upcoming Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Maybe. We'll just have to wait and see. And that's our list. Do you agree with our rankings? Did we leave any out? What weapons do you predict we will see in Phase 5? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more comic combat content. Ciao for now!